Jim Messina on how the great duo Loggins and Messina eventually ended. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Jim Messina is probably one of the most meticulous people I have ever interviewed. One of my favorite interviews of the last few years. His attention to detail is amazing. His memory is amazing. The guy remembers specific dates going back 40 years. In this chapter, we asked him about Loggins and Messina and how that ended. The story goes, Kenny wanted to go solo, right? Well, he he would always wanted to go solo. I mean, it was a, that was his... Kenny Loggins with Jim is sitting and then was a solo record. I mean, he, he wanted to finally do I think you're being too kind. I think you're being very kind. And well, I, no disrespect to Kenny, don't get me wrong. Kenny has proved himself many times, but uh, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna disagree with you. You're being too kind. So I'm just gonna say that on record. All right, I'll, I'll let you say that. <laughs> so uh, he, but he wanted to, uh, by the time he went solo, and I loved his his, his albums, I, I was always a fan. Uh, had you had enough on the level of going, yeah, I've done enough here. What was your what was your take on on not being on the next one? Were you okay? Were oh, you mean on his record? Yeah, once he went solo. Well, by the time he went solo, he was looking in another direction than than where we were. And I don't think um, I, I I wouldn't have been the right person for him. We, we were kind of going L.A. a little bit. He was kind of going yeah. that that West Coast yeah. sound. Yeah, he was going in a, in a more jazzy um, direction. Not that that's bad, but um, just going in a different direction. And quite honestly, I was going in a direction just wanting to be home for a while. Because I mean, after Springfield and Poco and Logs and Messina, that's ten years of being on the road and totally stressed constantly it wasn't just like i wasn't i was not just the musician i was the producer and you know in in many cases engineering and, and performing and writing and, and guiding that band um, you know managing most of that with the manager you know managers do things that i could that i would never be able to do but there still is the managing of of that organization to let somebody manage it i stressed out i i, I wouldn't i don't think that even if we were in the same musical direction. I don't think I'd have been the right person to produce his next record. I, I needed some time off, mm -hmm. which I took, which mm -hmm. I took. So I'm, I was glad that the record was successful. I'm glad that Kenny has had success. Um, it would have been awful to think that that would have been the end of it for him, uh, because uh, I, that would have been a little bit too much of a burden for me to, I. I I, yeah. I wouldn't have felt comfortable with that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was successful, and it, it goes to show that from, you know, I mean, I, I cut eight records with him. I don't think there's ever been a producer that's ever cut more than one <laughs> for, for whatever reason, right? But um, I'm very proud of what we did together, and he was a good partner. He really was. He worked hard. He was right there with me 100%. Um, uh, never missed a lick, never missed a gig, uh, never complained about having to work. Never punched in the nose. Well, he never, he never, uh, he, if I missed a note, he'd say, hell, I'll, I'll do it again. <laughs> and did. In the 70s, I used to like when, before Bonnie Raitt was big, she was known as, you know, a prestige artist, a Ry Cooter, people before they would sell records, a record company, like Asylum, uh, 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 they would have artists. And every label had a little bit of that. Some labels had more of, of, of going, I'm so glad the label is richer for having that artist on there, even though they may never sell, uh, but they add a certain depth to a label. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, that's what I miss, I think, the most. Right. Because, I mean, you have the internet now, so you can find your own versions right. of that. Right. But I used to like that. But that showed good faith to me. Well, it shows good taste. Right? I mean, not everybody likes... Uh you know, caviar, but it does taste good. <laughs> yeah. I'm always curious. I mean, I'm going back down looking at things I would have never thought about, like Tesla, for instance. And I, I saw an interesting interview about him and I, I, I realized that he was probably a savant. Yeah. Um, and didn't care too much about money, didn't think about it, which is why Westinghouse made an absolute fortune on him. But, and then he died broke and penniless, but a brilliant mind who 
Now we look at what he was thinking about, and all this stuff is just now coming to pass that he imagined. So yeah, it's it's nice to be able to get an insight as to who, what, where, and why. He has an amazing memory. We'll have more of our conversation with Jim Messina coming up next week. Go to jimmessina.com. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.